My first realistic rebuild of the year will feature the Houston Texans. The big difference is even though I take over as the general manager, I'm still making trades, signings, draft picks, everything like that. The difference is I'm doing things within the scope of reality and I'm not doing anything crazy. The NFL actually is even more crazy than what I'm probably going to be allowed to do in these rebuilds. But the biggest difference is that we're actually using a real 2023 NFL draft class made by me. So I've got a bit of an advantage there. It can be downloaded in the Xbox file share. And let's go ahead and talk about this Texans team and make them a powerhouse. With this Texans team, you do have to focus on the younger players. And I really actually like the way the Texans are going. I think they do have talent. I like Nico Collins. I want to get him involved. He'll be receiver too. Brandon Cooks is one of the more underrated receivers in the league. And Davis Mills was pretty awesome last year based on talent around him plus expectations. He's a former, I think, five-star quarterback. Yeah, former five-star quarterback recruit out of Norcross, Georgia, number 15 player in the country, number one pro-style quarterback, number one player in the state of Georgia. So this guy's incredibly talented. He didn't just come out of nowhere. Six foot four, 225 pounds. They do give him star development. And he was, again, pretty good last year. He could end up being our quarterback of the future. I don't think we're going to be locked into taking Bryce Young or CJ Stroud if we have a high enough pick. But I like the way they're going. At running back, I was a huge fan of the Damian Pierce pick. I think he's going to end up being RB1 for them. So I'll probably end up, if it's not letting me move anything, cool. I'll probably end up starting him. There we go. Laramie Tunsil, when he's not holding, is one of the better offensive tackles in the league. Kenyon Green, I thought was one of the best guards in the draft, if not the best guard, instant starter at left guard. I think he's going to be quite good. Was not so great at left tackle for Texas A&M, but was awesome at left guard. I think he's going to be a really good player. And then when you talk about, you know, the rest of this line, it isn't great. Justin Britt, AJ Kahn, Titus Howard, replaceable players. Brevin Jordan could be something at tight end. Could be. And then defensively, I also like what they're doing. Also, I didn't talk about my man, John Mechie. John Mechie was one of my favorite players in the draft class, has a super fun background. I think he was born in Ghana, was like in Taiwan, moved to Canada, ended up moving to New Jersey. I got the order wrong. He was born in Taiwan, moved to Accra, Ghana, and then ended up moving to Brampton, Canada, which is like a Toronto suburb before moving to New Jersey for high school, ended up committing to Alabama. Uh, They gave him a complete PCL tear in game. He is fighting cancer right now. Thankfully, they caught it early. He should be good to go, but he's not going to be playing year one. Hopefully, he's back healthy, better than ever in year two. I'm a huge John Mechie fan. I think he's awesome. And I think he's going to be a good player, not only for the Texans in real life, but for me in this rebuild. I think John Mechie is just a really good receiver. I don't know if he's ever going to be a wide receiver one dominant player, but I think he's going to be a really, really solid player option. Defensively, I like what they're doing on defense. At corner, you took Derek Stingley very high in the draft. And if you get rookie Derek Stingley to play as well as he did as a freshman at LSU, you're going to get a pretty good player. He was awesome in the SEC immediately as a freshman, maybe took his foot off the gas pedal after that a little bit, fought some injuries, but the talent is unbelievable. Stingley is an absolute stud. I want him starting as soon as possible. And because of Desmond King's Dev trade. I'm going to play him over Steven Nelson, even though he is a slot corner. Uh, Eric Murray at strong safety needs to be replaced. I think all of the linebackers need to be replaced, really. I might try and start Christian Harris as soon as possible. Might try and just get rid of Christian Kirksey, but it probably won't happen. Jonathan Grenard is a good player. I would probably have given him star dev. Malik Collins, Ross Blacklock. There's potential there. Like Roy Lopez was decent last season. Uh, And then Jerry Hughes is just like a vet. Same thing with Mario Addison. They're not really going to be doing much for me right now. And then maybe my favorite player in this entire defense, Jalen Petrie, safety out of Baylor. He was a, a stud at Baylor. He was a just a feisty, fiery, overhang defender, played some slot corner, played in the box a lot, was a really awesome player. And I think he could end up being a stud for this Texans team. More man coverage than zone coverage to kind of tell you about him. He's someone that is kind of built for the slot in a way. So could end up doing a bunch of different things there. Every position is in play for this team. I could draft a linebacker. I could draft a defensive tackle, a defensive end, a safety, a corner, on offense, center guard, tackle, tight end, receiver, running back. The door is wide open. 
So we have our work cut out for us. In week eight, we are 0 and 6, but we do have a breakout DB dev trade upgrade. Desmond King, he's not going to get it, but there's a possibility he moves up to superstar dev. It's not a big one. It's not a big one, but there's a possibility. As far as our expiring contracts goes, I don't really care about bringing back Andy Janovich, certainly not Marlon Mack. I'm not really interested in any of these free agents, really. Like, we got to have guys on roster, but I don't, I don't really want these guys. Well, we lost 24-13. We're 0-7 now. And uh, Desmond King did not move up to superstar dev. Playoff time, we won't be playing in them, but we did end up going 5-12. and 12. After just a terrible start, it seems like we had a good second half of the season. Because look at all these losses. I mean, 35-0 against the Colts in week one. But the second half of the season, I mean, we had back-to-back -back wins to end the season. We had some wins in there. I mean, it was still a really bad season. But it might get us out of the number one overall pick. And by might, I mean, it certainly will. Because the Jaguars are listed under us in the standings. Our offense was 31st best, usually not good. Davis Mills threw 20 picks, 24 TDs, 4,000 yards rushing. Damian Pierce, eight touchdowns, 877 yards on four per carry. Could have been worse. Nico Collins, though, 1,345 yards receiving and 11 touchdowns. Is Nico Collins going to end up being good for me? Brandon Cooks really didn't do much. Philip Dorsett, Brevin Jordan really didn't do a ton. I mean, he had a decent season for a tight end, to be fair. And then defensively, four players with over 100 tackles, three of them at over 125. Jerry Hughes had 15 tackles for loss, as did Rasheem Green, 14 for Blacklock and Grenard, 11 for Desmond King. Jerry Hughes had nine sacks, as did Jonathan Grenard. I mean, our defense looks like we got after the quarterback a little bit. Four picks for the rookie, Derek Stingley, three for Murray, we have zero for Jalen Petrie. I mean, did he even have tackles? He had 76. Where's our defense ranked? 22nd? Could have been worse. Now, we were the number one defensive passing yards per game team. However, we also allowed the most rushing yards in the league. So, would like to be a little bit more balanced. Teams were just running all over us. And the Cowboys beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. 41-35, Dak is your Super Bowl MVP. Josh Allen wins NFL MVP, Cooper Cup Offensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack Defensive Player of the Year, and your Rookies of the Year, Drake London for the Falcons, and our very own Derek Stingley Jr. All right, let's see what the Mock Draft has us doing. Mock Draft 3, Seahawks, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Jalen Carter to the Jags, and it looks like Will Anderson Jr. could be available at number 4. We also have the Browns pick. And they have us taking Bijan Robinson. Hadn't considered that. Really haven't thought about this too much yet because we don't have to. Okay, so last chance to re-sign players before we hit free agency. I just, I really, I don't want to pay anybody, especially not a fullback. Like, it's Andy Janovich. I would give him a two-year contract worth not a lot of money. I just don't, I don't really want anybody here. Camu Gruje hill is actually up to star dev. He's also 29. Don't have any interest. We just have to let these guys walk. There's just no need. Okay, free agency. Who's here? Derwin James, who I tried to sign on my last rebuild with the Falcons. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen that video yet. Didn't get him. I'm still interested. 27 years old. He wants to go to a big market, warm weather state. Seems like we fit pretty well. Elton Jenkins is also like an obvious player to go after. I prefer him to Rob Havenstein just because he's younger and in my opinion, better. Jabril Peppers also has superstar dev now. That's interesting. I do think Miko Hardman could be a good addition to our team as well. A lot of speed. He's a younger player. Do, I mean, Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins, John Mechie. Maybe I'm okay. Damian Harris seems like he'd be a really good fit for us. Don't really want to spend too much money on a running back, especially when we have Damian Pierce I'm trying to develop. I'd be more interested in somebody like Jamal Williams, who is just going to be a little bit cheaper. And, you know, I think that we don't really need RB1. We just need RB2. I'd like to go after some of these corners, but uh, they just, they really don't seem to want to join the Texans. Could bring AJ Boye back. But I think that's kind of all I'm really interested in. Just these, these three guys, specifically, obviously, Derwin James and Elton Jenkins. We'll evaluate offers and see what happens. Two guys are gone and two guys are headed to Houston. Elton Jenkins, Derwin James, huge additions 
to our Houston Texans team. Tackles are looking good. Kenyon Green has star dev. John Mechie, the third, is going to play. Still might draft a receiver. Derek Stingley has superstar dev. Did he get that or did he have it? I think he, I think he got it. One defensive rookie of the year, of course. That's right. That's a thing now that actually changes. We'll do, um, I don't know, inside shade. And also Desmond King got up to superstar dev. Why did that happen? Just cause. Cool. I still think corner can be a need. Also, I don't even remember the last time I saw a corner win defensive rookie of the year in Madden 22. So kind of cool here. Christian Harris is in the 70s. Linebacker is definitely a big move. Jalen Petrie with star dev. Uh, these morale, like detractors will end up resetting. They'll be back to normal pretty soon. Levante David was an option in free agency, but he really didn't seem to have any interest. Maybe I'll offer on Tremaine Edmonds, but I don't think he's going to want to accept. He's quite good in Madden. I will say that. And we gave him quite a bit of money, so we are number one right now. Can I take this money down and still be in good position to get him? Looks like it. Let's go ahead and uh, withdraw. Nope, not withdraw. Evaluate offers here and see if we can get Tremaine Edmonds. Yes, Tremaine Edmonds is now a Houston Texan. And I think we got him on a pretty good deal as well. Damian Harris signed with the Falcons. We did sign Jamal Williams. Yeah, I'm probably going to ignore running back still. Calvin Ridley and Odell are here. They haven't any offers. Just don't think it's going to be what I do right now. Evan Ingram, also a superstar dev, is insane. I'll say it. It's wild. I do also want to improve my depth at corner. So I think that's the final thing I'll look to do is sign one of these corners. Kyle Fuller is available. AJ Boye signed with the Cardinals. He would have been a good fit. Amani Warawarie is here. Not awful. I'm just really not looking for a long-term solution. I think a guy like Jordan Lewis makes a ton of sense. Two-year deal to be CB4, giving him a bit of money, but I, I actually think it's going to be worth it because we have plenty of money and I, he doesn't even have any offers. I can take this down a little bit too, I think. Jordan Lewis still getting no offers. It's only us. Is he going to sign with the Texans? We're still the only team that's offering him. Did he finally sign? Yes, Jordan Lewis is a Texan. So I think free agency went really well for us. Tom Brady's headed to the Lions on a one-year deal. No, you're not, Tom. Mike Gesicki to the Eagles. That kind of makes sense. Penn State guy. Odell remains unsigned. Levante David is Chicago. Calvin Ridley remains unsigned. Why? Got Tremaine Edmonds, Rob Havenstein to the Falcons as well. They're actually doing some stuff. Elton Jenkins, of course, to us. Jordan Porter to the Bucks. Dawson Knox stays with the Bills. Damian Harris we saw to the Falcons. Bears also got Unique Ngakwe. J.C. Treader back to the Browns. Evan Ingram back to the Giants. And it will be NFL draft time. Seahawks have the number one overall pick. Then it goes Eagles and Jags. Let's see what the Seahawks do at number one. They take Bryce Young, quarterback out of Alabama. Bryce Young headed to Seattle. And I like the variance in the Madden 23 drafts because usually... It just would have gone straight off the draft board, especially at that number one overall pick. It would have taken the number one guy no matter what. But what this did is it didn't even take the number one quarterback in C.J. Stroud, who I guess he moved down on the draft board for whatever reason. So Bryce Young, despite on the starting draft board being QB2, ends up going number one overall. Kind of fun. But tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the phone here. I'm going to call up the Eagles, and I'm going to try and jump the Jaguars. The Eagles have two top five picks, by the way. Our pick is at number four and then number 16, I believe. Two third round picks as well. I would pass up with a five to move up. That's what we're going to do. Uh, maybe didn't give them quite enough, but remember we're jumping up over one team. So we're really not trading up too much. I could have given them more, but I mean, what am I really going to give them? Like a, a second round pick and a second next year? It's just not going to happen. So I'll move up in the draft and it's not for a quarterback, obviously. It's for this guy, Will Anderson Jr. In my opinion, right now, August, I think he is the best player in the 2023 draft. It's not even a crazy saying at all. He was the best player in college football last year, got robbed of a Heisman invitation, wasn't even a finalist somehow. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Aiden Hutchinson, great season, did not deserve to be a Heisman finalist over Will Anderson Jr. Just did not. And in my opinion, Will Anderson Jr. deserved it over his own teammate in Bryce Young. Maybe I'm just partial to the defensive monster that is Will Anderson Jr., but he is incredible. 
and he will be my pick here at number two overall. Welcome to Houston, Will Anderson. He is a monster. He is a freak. Great run defense too. Great already savvy as a pass rusher. I don't know what it is with this specific player model, but the hair is just so, so screwed up. But I don't care about that. He's going to be wearing a helmet. He's going to be getting after the QB. What an addition to this team. Jags go Tyree Wilson, man. Trent Baalke has a type. Took Trayvon Walker last season and now is taking potentially Trayvon Walker 2.0 in terms of uh, height, weight, arm length. Like Trent Baalke loves the arm length. He's a a size queen. (laughs) Miles Murphy goes to the Eagles who have another pick here back to back. CJ Stroud, they're going quarterback. C.J. Stroud goes number five overall to the Eagles. The Dolphins go with Jalen Carter. I wasn't convinced the the Jaguars would take him. I didn't want to risk them taking Will Anderson Jr. Peter Skaronsky goes to the Steelers. Tackle out of Northwestern. Trenton Simpson, someone I probably had my eye on, goes number eight to the Panthers. Will Levis to the Giants at nine. Bengals take tight end Michael Mayer. Chargers go Brian Brzee out of Clemson. Another guy I would have considered. And there goes Isaiah Foskey. Lions, who just got Tom Brady. Upgrade the secondary. Go Eli Ricks. The Vikings take Jackson Smith and Jigba to bolster the receiving core. Well, guess what? Division rival just got a big-time corner. They're going to take a big-time receiver. And the last pick before we pick, it's Keeley Ringo. Arguably the best corner in this draft class right now. Goes at number 15 overall. I never really even considered trading up. Getting Keely Ringo would have been big for sure. Anthony Richardson's here. Paris Johnson's here. Antonio Johnson's here. Cam Smith, B. John Robinson, Kayshawn Boutte. We really have our pick of the litter right here. There are a number of really good players still available. Do I take Noah Sewell? This is kind of tough. B. John Robinson's here. And as much as I wanted to develop Damian Pierce, B. John is way better. It is just way better. Defensively, We just got Tremaine Edmonds. We have Christian Harris. Noah Sewell makes sense. He really does. Corner would have made sense too. We drafted Will Anderson Jr. He's going to start at right end. It's kind of wide open for us. But to me, I think three players, maybe four are in play. I'm thinking about Paris Johnson to play right guard. I'm thinking about Bijan Robinson to play running back. Maybe even Kayshawn Boutte to play wide receiver. Because that's a big time get. And then defensively, I'm thinking at Noah Sewell to play linebacker and Cam Smith to play corner. I'm multitasking watching GeoGuessr. Actually played in the Rainbolt GeoGuessr Pro Tourney today. Uh, went interestingly, uh, made it past the first round. Uh, and then unfortunately, we lost in the quarterfinals. But decent run, I guess. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I'm pretty good at GeoGuessr. Um, Play a lot of chat caster like in streams like this one. Shout out Toro. He's the man. Uh, And I also upload it on my third channel. That link is down in the description. But the reason I'm showing you this is on Twitter, first of all, fun fight. Um, I tweeted out. I was so conflicted. I didn't know what to do. Follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Bangle YouTube. I knew Cam Smith was going to get no love here. I went for it anyway. But I tweeted out about what to do. And I could have even thrown Paris Johnson as a choice in here as well. Bijan Robinson, currently ahead. Noah Sewell and then Kayshawn Boutte, Cam Smith, down by a lot. But the people have spoken. If you guys want to get involved in those, make sure to follow me on Twitter. But I'm taking them. Out of Texas. Longhorn legend. Hook em horns. B. John Robinson. He is currently my iPhone wallpaper. Has been for like a year now. Because I'm a super fan. Uh, B. John Robinson. Welcome to the Texans, not going far. And I guess in a way, the mock draft was exactly right about what we would do, taking Will Anderson Jr. and B. John Robinson. He is a monster. Again, in my opinion, the best running back prospect we've seen since Saquon Barkley, who before injury was incredible. Over 2,000 yards uh, rushing and receiving as a rookie. Incredible player. And B. John is, I think, going to be incredible as well. So we'll see how the rest of this draft goes. There goes Cam Smith. He's going to stay local. Paris Johnson goes next. It's all the players we were considering. Noah Sewell's after that. The Bears take Kayshawn Boutte. No, they go Broderick Jones. 
Did they? Yeah, they took Jackson Smith and Jigba earlier, right? No, that was the Vikings. So Boutte still on the board. Antonio Johnson still on the board. A bunch of really good players. We don't pick until the fourth pick in the second round, which is not far to wait, but in the same way that it's not technically far. It's like there are a number of players that I would like to draft that we probably won't be able to pick. Boutte goes at 23. Anton Harrison, tackle out of Oklahoma, goes to the Titans. There goes Quinton Johnston. The Lions take Antonio Johnson, not Quinton Johnston. Tyler Van Dyke is the Brady replacement, better than Kyle Trask. The Seahawks take Josh Downs. And what am I really hoping happens? Obviously not going to take Jameer Gibbs. Tony Grimes, maybe. Malachi Moore, Brian Branch would be in play because Jalen Petrie could be a slot corner anyway for me. Or I could just take a corner and Tony Grimes. Jordan Addison could be at our pick. Jaqueline Roy, Justin Flo, maybe. Could just go with a big nose tackle and Siaki Ika. I'm just trying to decide if I want to trade up. I don't think so. We're just going to see how this plays out. Malachi Moore, who I would have considered, goes to the Ravens. Brian Branch probably up next. No, it's Jameer Gibbs. Alabama, transferred by way of Georgia Tech, goes to the Cardinals. The Patriots take Tony Grimes. And the Cowboys take Tank Bigsby. Brian Branch is still on the board. So why would I take a safety with Jalen Petrie? And just after signing Derwin James, Jalen Petrie to corner, Brian Branch to safety, could even go Jalen Petrie at free safety, Brian Branch at corner, because even though it doesn't seem like a big need right now, Steven Nelson is 30 years old and I think has an expiring contract, I mean, any minute now. Yeah, last year, his deal. Jordan Lewis is on a two-year deal, and after that, it's, it's nothing. We could take a defensive tackle or a linebacker, but I'm not sure the talent is there. Could just go with a guard like Andrew Voorhees or... Um, JV on Cohen, maybe even at right guard, we could take Emil Echior. Jaqueline Roy might end up being the guy. Cox got censored. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I figured out a way to get Cox in the game because somebody was already in the draft class uh, named Cox. So I just ended up editing that, making him an outside linebacker and making his first name Brenton. And now Cox is censored. So that's cool. I know Brian Branch is the best player available. I know he is. So at what point do you just take the best player available? Again, I'm, I'm really not sure what to do. I don't think the Seahawks would take Brian Branch here. Maybe I'm wrong. They end up taking Andrew Voorhees. And the Eagles are on the board. And do I make another call to Philadelphia? They signed Jabril Peppers. I mean, I think they're unlikely to grab him. But I think this is my trade target spot. I'm going to give him a fourth round pick to move up two spots. It is a decent bit to move up, but I'm I'm compensating Philadelphia more even for uh, that first trade. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to essentially create a problem in my secondary a little bit, but it's a good problem to have. I'm going to play into the meme that I only draft safeties, and you're right because I'm going to draft the safety here. I know Brian Branch is the best player here. Great athlete, can play man, end zone coverage. We could do a bunch of different things, and I think it's just... Draft the best player and figure it out. And I think that's the way a lot of these great teams are built. Get talent, figure it out. And when we have versatile guys like Jalen Petrie, like Brian Branch, Desmond King, we are not locked in to certain positions. Brian Branch is a Houston Texan. Going to simulate to our third round pick now. Don't really plan on trading up for anybody else. We'll just read the board. Justin Flo has made it to the third round. So has DeMarvion Overshown. Hook him horns. Now, Overshone, I think, is a decent player. The Sweat Bandit, look him up. He wears like 100 sweatbands. Actually, never mind. That's what I'm here for, but check it out. Are you wearing enough sweatbands? That's why I call him the Sweat Bandit. He wears like a million of them, but he's not going to get sweaty, so there's that. But now the question becomes, do I take him? I mean, Cedric Van Praan is even here, which wouldn't be the worst pick in the world, potential starting center. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with a linebacker. It's between Justin Flo, who can't stay healthy, which shouldn't really even be a problem for us, or DeMarvion Overshone. Justin Flo is the fastest linebacker in the class, supposedly, with that 40 time. I'm going to take Justin Flo. Does have hidden dev, 87 speed. If he can just stay healthy, he's going to be a really good player. I hate to go back to the high school recruiting rankings, but he was the number six player in the country in the class of 2020, the number one inside linebacker, the number two player in the state of California, according to 24-7 Sports, 
and the 133rd ranked all-time recruit. And my point with that is just the talent is crazy. He just really hasn't played a ton, and maybe that's a reason he ends up falling to the third round. Who knows? Could have a big 2023. But Justin Flo is my pick here at the top of the third round. We don't get Noah Sewell, but we do get the other Oregon linebacker, as Jermaine Burton could end up going a lot higher than that, ends up going to the Colts. And Cedric Van Praan is still available. Rakeem Jarrett is here as well. Another former five-star recruit. Super good player. Um, he's another interesting one. But do I take another former five-star? Zach Pickens? Yep, you re you're reading that right. Two C's in Zach. He's a good athlete. Just kind of waiting for him to put it all together at South Carolina. Could use an upgrade at defensive tackle. Joey Porter Jr., son of Joey Porter, is still here. As is Storm Duck. Those would be decent value picks. And I don't think we have a fourth rounder anymore. So this is our last pick. We got to make a count. I think I'm going to go with the scheme fit here. I'm going to take the former five-star, Zach Pickens, out of South Carolina. Only normal development, but is a pretty good athlete. And hopefully ends up being a good player for us. Not sure if he starts year one, but could eventually start. We actually have a seventh rounder. My bad, but I don't know what we're going to find with that pick. Okay, this center's still on the board. I'm going to take a chance on him. We have to at that point. I don't even know if he's any good. I don't remember. <laughs> and you know what? We'll take another former five-star, Drew Sanders. I don't know how he has A zone. To me, he's kind of like more of a pass rusher. A zone is like for an outside linebacker, though. I can assure you it's not very high. We'll take him. Uh, was going to transfer to Texas from Bama. Chose Arkansas, who beat the brakes off of Texas, I suppose, last year. Just frustrating to lose out on that talent as a Texas fan. But they've had a really good offseason. A lot of great transfers. Great recruiting so far. Check out our draft recap. We got Will Anderson Jr. He's an 83 overall. He is one of the highest overall players in the draft class. And for good reason. He is, you know, borderline generational. B. John Robinson is an 84. Again, borderline generational running back. Maybe he's a little bit too juiced, but I'm telling you, and you're going to hear people talk about it over the next year, he is a legit running back prospect. I mean, as as good as they get, really. And my reasoning for that is, uh, and not that I have to rationalize it, he's a great player, obviously. Van Pran is an 8, 58 overall. Might have to adjust that. Um, but with these new generational draft classes where you do see 84 overall guys, 85, 86, everything kind of gets scaled up. So when you can draft an 86, 87 overall running back, I don't think 84 is that crazy. I think Justin Flo could end up being really good for us. Might end up moving him to outside linebacker. And finally, we got John Mechie. Defensively, Justin Flo is going to play right outside linebacker. Tremaine Edmonds at Mike, Christian Harris, left outside linebacker. Will Anderson Jr., he can't be the same position as Jonathan Grenard. So left end, which is what he plays anyway, is a good fit. Or at least rushes off the left edge uh, quite a bit. We'll do zone for Derek Stingley just because the CPU is unlikely to upgrade that at any point. So plus two zone coverage for Stingley. Zach Pickens is a 70, which is pretty good. I just don't think it's good enough for me to start him over Ross Blacklock. Maybe because Malik Collins is like 30 now, I can start him. And the way I'm going to get Jalen Petrie playing time... I'm going to start Brian Branch at free safety. I mean, he's got, what, 78 zone, 75 man. Petrie's got 70 zone, 72 man. Yeah, I'm going to play Jalen Petrie, I think, at at corner. Petrie's a 76 overall corner. I'm going to play him over Steven Nelson and Jordan Lewis. I obviously didn't know I was going to end up drafting uh, Brian Branch. And Steven Nelson's going to move back to free safety, but I swear to God... If they play him over Brian Branch, I'm going to freak. Brian Branch is my starter. So this is the offense. John Mechie is going to be my receiver too. Really excited to see what he can do. And then defensively, this is how I'm setting it up. Should be pretty good. Jalen Petrie, CB3, aka slot, nickel corner. I think he's going to be really good in that role. It could have been Brian Branch and just leaving Petrie a free safety. But I think Petrie's a little bit more suited for it in Madden, at least. We are one in six at the midseason mark. That's not great. Strengths of this class, left outside linebacker, which is a weird one. Defensive tackle, wide receiver. Wide receiver, I would consider. Defensive tackle, I would consider. I gotta fire my quarterback scouts. 
Just kind of forgot to look into that at uh, week one. Wow, Laramie Tunsil does not want to re-sign. Neither does Desmond King. Steven Nelson would like to come back. Grenard would. Jordan Lewis would. I, I guess I signed him to a one-year deal. I thought it was a two-year deal. Grenard has to be number one priority here for sure. I'm going to give him a four-year deal. Cap hit approaches 10 mil per year. He's going to return. Laramie Tunsil is also... Uh, a high priority for me has to be has to be i think i don't really want to pay him 20 mil per year but if we're going to get him i'm going to have to so i'll offer him this contract and he says i want more money bitch that's basically what he says he said nah that is an old reference on my channel if you remember nah if you guys know the youtuber wheels we were out and it was a texans bye week on a saturday night and I saw Laramie Tunsil at a club, which I don't go to those anymore, but it was the uh, fall before COVID. I'm, I'm going up to Laramie Tunsil. I recognize exactly who it is. And I go, hey, are you Laramie Tunsil? And he goes, nah. But it's like, it was though. It, like, it was a massive human being that had his same face and earring and everything. It was Laramie Tunsil. I can appreciate not wanting to be approached in public. I get it. Didn't want to draw attention to himself. Just was hanging out. Um, but yeah, the nah response, it, like, it shook me to the core. I had no idea how to react. I'm like, nah, okay, okay, yeah, okay, have a good night. <laughs> I, was just, I was so floored. I was not expecting it at all. Uh, but I don't know, even know what he was doing. I remember. He was just like hanging out on a pillar at the like club or bar or whatever, like holding up the building, you know, pillar. And uh, he just had like, like three like like bodyguards with them. I don't know, they were like black shirts. So I, I remember them being bodyguards. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that was his idea of a fun Saturday night, but I guess so. We were somehow actually worse than last year. I went Colts playbook and they went 12 and five. We had the worst offense in the league. Our defense was still awful. Wow, CJ Stroud had a year. See on the right side there, completion percentage over 70% on over 5,500 yards passing with 42 touchdowns. Okay. I mean, multiple receivers approaching 2,000 yards. C.D. Lamb was eight yards shy. Had 25 touchdowns receiving. It's a record by a billion. Cooper Cup, 24. Tyler Boyd, 22. What is happening? Davis Mills was bad. I gotta change playbooks. That's what it is. He was so bad. <laughs> Rushing. Bijan didn't even get to 1,000 yards on 261 carries. Did have five touchdowns. Not good. Receiving, John Mechie led our team in yards. Catches, we have Nico Collins and Brandon Cooks, both with 72. I mean, three receivers at 900 yards or more, and Brevin Jordan at tight end is just behind that. Had a very good year. Led our team in catches, actually, with 82. And then defensively, Tremaine Edmonds had 131 tackles, four for loss. 15 tackles for loss for Will Anderson Jr. led the way. Only six and a half sacks, though. 14 for Blacklock, uh, tackles for loss, I mean, 13 for Grenard. Really just didn't get a ton of pressure. Grenard took a step back in terms of production, as did, uh, I mean, our whole team, really. Interceptions, four for Tremaine Edmonds, but our defense was almost as bad as our offense was, and our offense was the worst in the league. Scored 18.9 points per game, the only team in the league under 20. Cowboys offense looks like it was pretty good. The Eagles had both the best offense and defense, pretty much. The Colts' defense was dominant. I'm going to try Colts' defense. I think I think we got to change the offense to something more pass-heavy, maybe. I'm going to try Saints' offensive playbook. B. John Robinson does have superstar X-Factor, by the way. Is up to an 89 overall already. He's really, really good. I won't apologize. Will Anderson Jr. is up to an 86 overall. Morale's affecting that a little bit. Did Brian Branch end up not starting? Did they change something? He's up to an 80, so maybe he started. Yeah, he put, he had a starter stat line. So we're going multiple power run, New Orleans, Tampa 2, Indianapolis. Hopefully that uh, ends up getting good results for us. We'll potentially see some development trade upgrades as well, Super Bowl week. So I'm not going to discount anything right now. Hopefully some of these guys end up going up. And the Cowboys are back in the Super Bowl. Do I just have to go Cowboys playbooks across the board? I might have to. Yearly awards, Joe Burrow wins MVP. I don't really like seeing it from this angle, but I guess we do get to see the uh, legit rankings of everybody. And the Saints did very well. 
Hoping for big things there. AFC Offense Player of the Year, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, Joe Burrow, one, two, three. Okay, their offense seems to be cracked, even though no Jamar Chase in there. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year for the AFC. And uh, unfortunately, no Texans anywhere in here. But Jalen Carter, number six, wow. And the Bengals beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow, MVP. CeeDee Lamb, Offensive Player of the Year. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year. Tyler Van Dyke is your Rookie of the Year. And Jalen Carter uh, for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Dax Hill, by the way, won Super Bowl MVP. Talk about a Jesse Bates replacement. This is just Quintana, doesn't even have a first name. Okay. Okay, so I want to bring back Laramie Tunsil. Desmond King went down to star dev, even though I have dev trait regression off. I'm just, I don't know why it flips sometimes. It's happened in, I think, the Falcons rebuild too. It doesn't really matter. I do want Laramie Tunsil though. I'm going to have to increase the money. It's the only thing I can do. He's going to test free agency. Hey, Laramie, no, you're not. You're franchise tagged. It's so expensive, but I'm going to do it. Because we have so much money. Look in the top right. We have infinite money right now. Two-year deal for, for Desmond King. Not interested in signing. Well, obviously not going to franchise tag him. I'd like to bring back Steven Nelson. Two-year deal. He's also going to test free agency. Jordan Lewis, two-year deal. He is back. Uh, we'll need a new center. Need a new punter. Going to be tough to replace the red rifle, Andy Dalton. But we're going to find a way. Ross Blacklock has star dev now. I would give him a three-year deal, I think. And Ross Blacklock is back. All right, we have so much money. We can definitely make a splash in free agency depending on who's here. Nick Bosa doesn't really want to join. Justin Herbert is here. Trayvon Diggs is a 91 overall superstar X-Factor. Well, we do have a need at corner somewhat. T. Higgins wouldn't be a bad choice. So I'm going to consider receiver. I think I have to. Tight end, I need... Two interior offensive linemen, no question. And then defensively, Brian Branch is up to superstar development. I'm in. I could use a corner. Oh, we got Tay Gowan. Shout out to Tay Gowan. Super nice guy. I want Petrie in the nickel. I need a boundary corner. Darnell Savage is interesting. Obviously, don't need a safety anymore. Uh, just checking him out. And I think I'm going to take Trayvon Diggs. I mean, he's just a really, really great fit. Big time interests already. And, uh, I mean, it's it's a reasonable offer. He's 26 years old. We need a boundary cornerback pretty badly. All right, I raised the uh, amount a little bit to go ahead and rise in the rankings. Ed Oliver doesn't want to come back to Houston. Has absolutely zero interest. All right, we're going to go ahead and evaluate offers here. Uh, I got Ed Oliver's interest up a little bit uh, with a defensive scheme change. And I took the money down, but it looks like it's going to have to go back up if we're going to get him. But it's, it's annoying. The dude went to Houston and doesn't want to return, I guess. I mean, I, dude, living in Houston right now, I guess I get it. It's hot as hell. We did get Andre James at center. I guess that's something. Trayvon Diggs signed with the Seahawks. Chris Lindstrom, who I also went after, signed with the Seahawks. And here I am just about to re-offer Desmond King. It's kind of our options right now. All right, let's see my targets here. Please, can we see some guys sign with the Texans? Ed Oliver, please. Oh, they're all gone. Because I got all three of them. Actually, no, I didn't. I got Ed Oliver. Did Desmond King sign elsewhere? The Bucks. So, I mean, Andre James and Ryan Bates aren't great on the offensive line, admittedly. I still really want another boundary corner. Ed Oliver is a huge get. I think defensive tackle is just totally fine now. And if Darius Slay is still available, I think I'm going to try and target Darius Slay just because he's not available still. Shadobi Awuzie could be okay. A Dory Jackson. Maybe I'll offer a Dory Jackson. We're going to overpay a little bit, probably. But I need someone that can play boundary corner at a high level. And that's just tough to come by. All right. Sign with us, please. Nope. What about now? Okay, we actually... We've done all the evals we can. All right. Come on, Dory. Please sign with us. We're in the lead. Did we get him? Yes, we got a Dory Jackson. I don't know, why do they keep changing my offer? I, I gave him a three-year deal, 100%. Is it just bugged? I offered him a three-year contract. You're gonna see it, I'm, I'm gonna show it. Yet his contract's a one-year deal. I'm changing it. Yet another bug in the game, but it's a three-year contract now. I ramped up the money to 21 mil too. Also, I gotta find out who I'm gonna draft. Haven't really looked at too many different players. Corner probably is one I'll look at. 
only see man coverage, though. I don't want to take an A zone cover corner that can't play man when I'm going to need them to play man coverage. Only 5'9". This is the number one overall corner. I doubt it. Also, Nick Barrington, by the way, this is a guy to consider. I know it's a safety. It's a round two to three guy with B zone coverage. That's also a great athlete. That's definitely someone to consider. This safety, true, uh, too, Tremaine Denard. He has decent looking attributes. Uh, a hit power, B zone coverage, also really good athlete. I hate to just take safeties, but they're good. And this safety, Lucas Guerrero, even faster. Also B zone coverage, B man coverage. I mean, that's a slot corner if ever I've seen one. And again, it's just like, I know safeties, but they seem to be the best players so far. It's an interesting player. 6'5", 260 power rusher, A pursuit, A tackle, A to C block shedding. Not a tremendous athlete. And I'll be honest, I don't really love the receiver class either. I would say that Adrian McKee seems to be the best one. He's got elite jumping, great speed, great strength. He ran pretty quickly, but I guess there are a lot of really fast receivers in this class. This tight end looks interesting. Keith Chambers, great speed, elite strength, ran four or five flat at his pro day. A medium route running, A short route running, A catching traffic, B deep route running. Keith Chambers for a round three to four tight end has got to be the pick. This center looks intriguing at the very least. I don't think he looks amazing, but he looks intriguing and looks like a fantastic athlete as well. So I would consider him another round three to four guy. And Malcolm Whitfield also looks like an incredible tackle prospect. One of the best that I've seen so far. I will also consider drafting him. Also, this defensive tackle, C block shed, whatever. He's got A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackling, is an elite speed, elite strength player. I know I just drafted a defensive tackle, but A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. Like, this guy looks like a freak. It's another interesting player. A awareness, B block shed, A power moves, B pursuit, B tackle. Uh, and apparently also has great speed, good strength. And he went to Texas. Hook him horns. This linebacker also elite speed. I don't have any more of these guys I'm going to show you. A awareness, A zone, A to C tackle. I wish I knew a little bit more about that. But I think this is a pretty deep draft class, or at least has the potential to be. It looks pretty good. Things could change. I have a pretty good feeling about this class. And, and I don't even mean just, oh, it's going to be an electric, amazing class. I just have a good feeling about where these players are ranking wise. And I think I'm going to have a pretty good chance to get a lot of them. That's right. I have private workouts. I can find out a little bit more about three players. Is Chad Reed one of the guys I want to know more about? Maybe it is. The mock draft has us going Chad Reed at number one and Isaiah Drayton at number three. So the Browns were really bad. They think we're going to take two left outside linebackers. I like having multiple first round picks every year. It gives us a little bit of flexibility. I'm not really sure what I want to do just yet. All right, so Chad Reed, I got up to 90%. I just wanted to have a better idea of the player. Uh, maybe wasted it a bit on him, but he's definitely got a power move. So he's going to be, he's going to be really good. Isaiah Drayton, I wanted to check out. He's up to 90%. A to B pursuit's great. A tackling's great. C block shit, I don't love, but the guy's a really solid athlete with elite acceleration. A finesse moves for sure. A tackling, also going to be a beast. And then I checked out the other linebacker, Raheem Meekins. B to C tackle, I don't love. B block shit, though, is good. A zone coverage is great. C pursuit, pretty good. And he's a phenomenal athlete. I, I don't even know how to play this. So we have two top three picks. Elton Jenkins could play guard again. He's done that plenty of times. And uh, we could take the tackle, middle of the first round if I trade down. There's a tight end that I want. Didn't really find any receiver, super intriguing. And then the issue of linebacker. So we could run like an attacking 4-3. Grenard could stay there, or we could take a pass rusher to play over him. Justin Flo is decent, but we need to upgrade on Christian Harris. So I could just take another outside linebacker. I could take a really good athlete. So who, what would I prefer? Do I want Chad Reed out of Texas, hook him horns? That's a good athlete, but I mean, probably with F zone coverage, like he's not playing off ball. So he would have to be a defensive end, which would be, I guess, a Jonathan Grenard replacement. And I don't really want to replace Jonathan Grenard. Isaiah Drayton, same deal. The guy is not going to be able to play off the ball. Also a good athlete. I mean, Chad Reed, 6'2", 251. I, I want both of them, but I just don't think that's a smart thing to do. I do want Malcolm Whitfield. I think I've decided on that. 
The guy's just really, really good. So it's just deciding between Texas's Chad Reed or Tennessee's Isaiah Drayton Battle of the UT. They both have their strengths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade down from number one, see what my offers are. It's just so impossible to get any good value back for the number one overall pick. It's ridiculous. I like this trade from New England, though. Uh, I will move down to number nine, pick up a second rounder and a fourth rounder. It's not enough value for number one, but it doesn't do too much for me. <laughs> like, it only helps me to do that. So, had to be the move. And at number one overall, the Patriots go Chad Reed. So, they make that decision pretty easy for me if he gets number two, the other uh, outside backer. And Chad Reed is going to be good. I just want to accumulate the mid-round picks based on the way this draft has fallen. And I've got some options. So I think Seattle is going to be end, or is going to end up being the pick I opt to take. Move down to number five, pick up a third. With Minnesota, though, I move down to seven. And I would pick up a second. However, I would risk missing out on the outside linebacker who I do kind of want, but I think it's worth it because that second round pick is so many spots ahead of the third round pick. So we have more value, more ammo really if we want to move back up. And that linebacker is not supposed to go for seven picks. There goes another outside linebacker though. At what point do I get worried about it? It's one pick. All I have to do is get past the Jets. The Jets could definitely take him. I'm going to try and move up one spot. And I shouldn't have to give up much. And based on the way I'm being squeezed, I'm going to squeeze the Jets. And I pick at number nine, again, remember. Multiple second round picks. I will give you two sevens to move up one spot. Yeah, it's stupid. All right. It all evens out. At number six, I'm going to take a shot at that outside linebacker. He looks, he looks pretty good. Isaiah Drayton, A tackle, A to B pursuit, C block shedding. All of that looks pretty good to actually play outside linebacker. Ran pretty well, not like elite speed, but pretty well. Elite acceleration, apparently. And the skills add a finesse moves to that. I think he's going to be good. Welcome to the team, Isaiah Drayton, with normal development. Unfortunate, but in this game, it's pretty easy to get those guys upgraded, so I'm not really too upset about it. 84 speed, 79 strength, 91 acceleration is crazy. I think he's going to be decent. The Jets go with an outside linebacker, so thank goodness... And is that, is that the right tackle I wanted? I don't think so. It might have been. No, it's not. Malcolm Whitfield is available. Do I take him at number nine? He's not supposed to go for 14 picks. I'm going to see if I can do anything. Baltimore is going to give me a third round pick for moving up one spot. I'm going to do that. They take a receiver, who I just, I wasn't going to take. And then I think I'm going to take this from the Raiders too. I move down six spots and I pick up a second round pick and then a fourth next year. I just need my guy to make it six spots. And he should be. One spot, Chargers go with a left end. This draft has worked out really well for me so far. Malcolm Whitfield, I think he's going to be a really, really good player. Welcome to the team. 6'4", 318 pounds out of Auburn. A awareness, A impact blocking, B pass block, B run block. Physically, elite acceleration, great agility, elite change of direction. Strength is also great. He looks like he's going to be amazing. Only normal dev. That's kind of annoying. Going to be tough for him to get any type of increase, but the player looked fantastic. The next player on my board is the defensive tackle Tyrell Neighbors. We're just loading up with talent on defense and I'm all for it. We have the second pick, or excuse me, the first pick in the second round. I just don't want to risk that defensive tackle going off the board because he looks unbelievable. But there are some other defensive tackles in front of him. We'll see how it goes. And there goes another one. I'm starting to get a little bit worried. He is now the top rated defensive tackle on the board. At what point do I consider a move up? I'm just hoping he gets to me. It's not far. I don't really need him, but he's good. And he's made it to our pick. Tyrell Neighbors looks unbelievable. Block shedding is a bit low, but A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle for a player with elite speed and strength. Great change of direction, jumping agility. I mean, surely this is as generational of a player as we're going to find. And normal dev. He's got 95 strength, 79 speed, 79 acceleration. How have I drafted so many normal development players in this draft class, man? I feel like I've killed it. Okay, so on the board now, I can't see what picks we have, but we have two very close together. We have the number nine pick in the second round and number 16. I have some safeties that look pretty good. 
Uh, I'm not gonna prioritize that, but I mean, some of these do look very good. Raheem Meekins also looks worth taking. And I do want the tight end as well. Keith Chambers, I would take him early. He'll be my next pick. After this one, I mean, I just have to decide who I want. I mean, he's got B run block and he's a pass protector type with a pass block, a pass block finesse. I'm gonna take Jordan Thomas to potentially play him on the O-line. It's an interesting look, but we could use the depth and the age of 21 is very good. 86 strength only. I've been killing the normal dev selections in this one. I'm all over it. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take Raheem Meekins here, the linebacker that I like, cause he's not gonna be available. So he'll be my draft pick. He has hidden dev. 91 speed, 90 acceleration. We'll have to see how good he actually is though. And we'll simulate to the top of the third round. The tight end should still be available at that spot. Not really worried about it. And there he is, Keith Chambers, not gonna risk it. A, catching traffic, B, deep route running is great. Uh, B to D catching, I kind of worry about, but he has elite strength, great speed. A, catching traffic, A, medium route running, A, short route running. The player should be quite good, uh, at least good value. We'll draft him. Hidden Dev, okay. It'll still be interesting to see how actually good he is, but it looks good to start. He's 273 pounds, by the way. So my favorites are off the board. So I think it's going to be a good idea to just trade for future picks. And I can get a future third from a lot of different teams. We'll pick the Dolphins. This receiver is interesting. Sharif Terry. A spectacular catch. Like a lot of bad stuff. Like B catching traffic's good. Deep uh, route running is good. D catching so bad. But he's really fast. I, there's something here maybe. I'll take him. Does have hidden dev. 94 speed. 94 change of direction. 90 agility. Okay, Titans give me a future 2025-3 for this pick, so I'll dig it. I'll take it. All right, moment of truth with the draft recap. How well do we do? I mean, it could have been worse, right? 74 overall, 73. Tyrell Neighbors is a 79, so I knew he was going to be quite good. He's a beast. Like, that's not a surprise. Now, Isaiah Drayton, he's got 77 finesse moves. It's, it's not bad, but I... Ugh. Not thrilled. Whitfield at a 73. Like, that's okay, I guess. Jordan Thomas is a 72. Raheem Meekins is a 74. And he had star dev or better, right? Yeah. I could see him playing. He actually looks like a beast. Keith Chambers, too. I mean, he'll probably start right away. And Sharif Terry is a 72. I don't really know how much he'll play. Maybe as a return man. He looks pretty well balanced, though. And we got the number one overall player in the draft. Some safeties in there. Charles Sapp, who just didn't look athletic enough. Chad Reed was only a 73, which, how is he rated so low? Also, only normal dev. He looks good though, man. 84 speed, 79 power moves, 79 pursuit. We would have been in like an identical situation. I guess he just wasn't a super stacked draft class. We got the best player in the draft. He just says normal dev. I don't think I'm even gonna change anything. Whitfield, I thought would be a higher overall with star or better dev. Doesn't have it. I'm just gonna keep things as is. Although Terry, Terry might have to play a little bit. You know, it's funny. Uh, Neighbors is so good that he's actually just going to start right away over Ross Blacklock. But we have pretty good depth on this team now. I have three corners I like enough. I have two safeties I like. My linebacker core is coming together. My defensive line, I think, is in a good spot. Offensive line, I think, is still in a decent spot. I'm interested to see what happens at receiver. All I can say is we'll see what happens. I'll see you at the midseason mark. I'm hoping the team's actually good. I think we should be at least competitive. Four and three at the midseason mark. This is a big upgrade, and we're at the top of our division. And I didn't replace my scouts. Seems like a really good tackle class, but I don't really need that. Again, I should have replaced my scout here, just because I don't need quarterback, and now I certainly don't need tight end. Although, yeah, some of these tackles do look pretty good. Okay, Malik Black looks pretty sick. It's just big ranges on everything right now. He's not a pass rusher at all. He's an off-ball linebacker who, I mean, great to elite speed, great to elite change of direction. I don't know. I'm just always on the hunt, always on the prowl for these generational players. And I really haven't found too many of them yet. Always looking. A bunch of really important free agents, Davis Mills, Brandon Cooks. I'm not going to say the kicker's name because that's asking for trouble. No shot. Uh, we'll call him Chris. I don't know if you can see him in the top right there. Here he is. Not even, nope. Uh, Laramie Tunsil, on the other hand, I would like to sign to a long-term deal. Give him a little bit more money. We got to keep him. 
and he's going to resign. Three-year deal for Brandon Cooks? Longer-term commitment? No. Two-year deal for Nico Collins? All right, he's going to be back. And I will simulate to the playoffs, and I think there's a decent chance we'll actually be participating in them. Playoff time. We are in them. We went 11-6. and six. It's a big-time second half of the season. Josh Allen threw for 5,800 yards. These sim stats are nuts. Uh, Davis Mills still was not great. Our offense was 27th ranked. He was better, though. 4,520 yards, 25 touchdowns to only 12 interceptions. I will take that. Rushing, Bijan over 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns. Damian Pierce, 13 touchdowns. He was our goal line back. Receiving, Brandon Cooks, big year. John Mechie was pretty good as well. Nico Collins had a pretty solid season. Now, I want to see what our receiver three did. He didn't play. Sharif Terry. But he's got the tags of future starter and day one starter. So I think he might be pretty good. Defensively, Raheem Meekins had 127 tackles, four for loss, two sacks on a pick. Very good year. Ed Oliver, 21 tackles for loss, 19 for Will Anderson Jr. 16 for Tyrell Neighbors. Jonathan Grenard had 13 sacks, 14 and a half for Will Anderson Jr. That is a very good year. Yeah, he's, he's entering elite territory at this point, and he's already very, very good. So he, he's a beast. Ed Oliver, eight sacks, six and a half for Grenard, three for the rookie Tyrell Neighbors, four picks for Derwin James, three for Stingley. Very nice to see that. Player upgrades, Mechie's going to go up to, I'm going to do deep threat for him. So he's going to actually stay at a 79. And Bijan, I'll do power back just to make him a little bit more well-balanced. He is a beast. I'll keep saying it. Hook him horns. No regrets. And we got the Dolphins in the wild card. Let's go ahead and see if we can beat them. They are a little bit better than we are on paper, but this is only, what, season... It was season three. So this this could be the final season if we do well, but I want to do another season after this. We lose 16-14, and uh, we'll go ahead and do one final year and try to win the Super Bowl. I think the team is just one or two moves away. Cowboys, again, win the Super Bowl. I think that's their second of the video. It is. Dak wins MVP. C.D. Lamb, Offensive Player of the Year, and Miles Garrett wins Defensive Player of the Year. James Hitchens, Vikings quarterback, is your Offensive Rookie of the Year. Didn't they? No, I guess it was in a different video. Never mind. Martin Ware, Defensive Tackle for the Niners, is your Defensive Rookie of the Year. Do I just go Cowboys offense and defense? It seems like they're unbeatable in sim, but we went 11-6. and six. I don't really feel a huge need to change anything. Do we want to bring anybody else back? Matt Palumbo, because he has star dev as a punter randomly, I think for sure. I'll give him a five-year deal. Wants to play for a new team? Why? Brandon Cooks is regressing a little bit. I would give him... I mean, they rejected that offer. I don't really want to pay him this much, though, is the thing. I'm going to let him walk. I'll test free agency. Brevin Jordan, probably going to have to walk as well. I'm just not paying him this much to be a backup tight end. Not going to do it. Free agency... We need receiver. Micah Parsons would be interesting. Kyle Pitts, Najee Harris. So it's that draft class is now free agent eligible. Okay, in free agency, I've made a number of offers. Uh, five players, and those players are Amari Cooper, big time wide receiver one, Trey Smith, old Levante David just for depth, Darnay Holmes, big play Darnay, just cornerback depth, and then Brevin Jordan to get brought back. Those are the guys I'm going after. I would like... Amari Cooper. And we got Amari Cooper. We got Levante David and Darnay Holmes. Unfortunately, we did not get Trey Smith. He's headed to Buffalo. I will offer Evan McPherson though, by the way. Be a big upgrade at the position. And if we're going all out, I'm going to give a kicker a big contract. I would also like to upgrade at guard. Nobody's going after David Edwards and he is an upgrade. So I'll offer. And we got David Edwards. It didn't take long. Did we get Evan McPherson? We also got Evan McPherson. So I honestly think we're in a really good spot and I'm ready to simulate to the draft. Actually, I, I need to do the uh, focus players as well. And we have, I think, one first round pick. So not gonna do anything too crazy. We're not gonna go full LA Rams and just trade a, a first or two first round picks for Jalen Ramsey. It's a possibility. Trade for a Von Miller type guy. It's like that happens a lot in the NFL now. We could use a premier pass rusher, but... I just like keeping some of the core of the Texans together. And even though there's not a whole lot to work with, a guy like Jonathan Grenard, I feel like should be a piece we build around. And even though he hasn't developed into a beast in this franchise, I think he can be in real life. I think he can be 
a staple of the Texans defense. So we'll see. This tackle looks really good. Byron Adams, just A's across the board. B run block, very, very good athlete as well. Strength is only good, but good is good. It's interesting that one not only is 428 the third fastest receiver time, it's also only listed as great speed as opposed to elite. Very interesting, but it's an interesting receiver here. Big deep threat, that's kind of his whole game. I mean, the class, it really looks underwhelming. Maybe it's not, but there's certainly no one in here that I'm really excited to draft. Yeah, I'm just gonna simulate to the draft. I don't think anyone that we pick is really gonna change things too drastically. And we actually don't even pick till number 23. The only player I'm even remotely interested in is Byron Adams. And I think I would probably have to trade up to number one to get him. Other than that, maybe Malik Black I would have interest in. We talked about him a little bit. He seems like he could be quite good actually. And maybe even start over Justin Flo. It says our top need is quarterback. I kind of disagree with that. And I'll offer the Cardinals a third. Wow, and I'm gonna have to give them like a, a sixth. Like it matters. Offer them a third and a sixth to move up from 23 to 14, just to ensure that Malik Black's gonna be on the board. So we'll swap first round picks and I think go with the outside linebacker. And there he is, Malik Black. He could end up being bad for sure. Like he has ranges that say, okay, this guy might not end up being great. Kenny Holcomb looks interesting. A awareness, B pursuit, A zone coverage. Where's tackling? B to D tackle. It could be B, could be C. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the shot on Malik Black. Seems to be an elite athlete. Also, so many traits in the player notes. He is 23, but A to C block shit, A pursuit, A to C tackle, A to C zone coverage. Great athlete, has some elite in there. I could see him being quite good. We'll have to see. Does have hidden dev, 87 speed. That's pretty good. 87 acceleration, 79 strength, 79 change of direction. Yeah, not bad. But at this point, our team is so good that it's going to be tough to draft anyone that's going to end up playing even a little bit. This receiver can also run a little bit. Looks decent. Not amazing. I'll go with this receiver. What else am I going to do? He's got hidden dev, 94 speed, 95 agility. I mean, looks pretty sweet. I mean, F medium route running is bad, but he's a one trick pony. Go far, run fast, catch ball, maybe. And I will just let the CPU handle the rest. I just, it's not that I can't be bothered. It's just that I don't think anyone we take is going to have any type of serious impact. So I'll just let the CPU handle it. We'll have a maybe a better shot of getting somebody usable, but it's just going to be depth. Draft recap, still so much money, by the way. Malik Black is a 75 overall. That's potentially good enough to start on the outside. Manny Terrell is a 73. Got a backup running back. Nothing particularly good with this draft. Uh, Byron Adams was a 78 with hidden dev. Is it superstar? He looked good enough that it could be. It is superstar, but I wasn't trading all the way up to number one to get him, but still very good. Is the best player in this class. Good quarterback, good receiver. And Kenny Holcomb, did I look at this dude? I think I did, right? I had to have. He is a 77 overall. 90 speed, looks very good. I ended up taking the outside linebacker over him. Would I do that in hindsight? Maybe, he has star dev, he's definitely a better player based on overall. I don't know, I, I think I think it's just probably not gonna matter a ton. Also, Raheem Meekins has superstar dev. He won Defensive Rookie of the Year, I guess for the AFC. I don't know how they do it in this game, but he won Defensive Rookie of the Year, it says. I am gonna start Malik Black at left outside linebacker. He's better than Justin Flo. So I think that's just kind of a natural decision. Brian Branch at free safety. Corners look pretty good. I like our group. Petrie's going to play over uh, Darnay Holmes. The team looks good. The team looks really good. Neighbors also got up to star dev. Specialist wise, Oliver, Neighbors, Anderson, Grenard off the edge. Linebackers, I'm going to play Meekins over Levante David. That's for sure. And then Jalen Petrie in the nickel. We have a star dev uh, running back there. That's interesting. And uh, maybe I'll play Terrell as our slot receiver. He's a rookie. He's a little bit better than Nico Collins. I'll play him over Terry just because he has the potential of having superstar dev. So he's going to be better long-term uh, if he does, which he might not keep in mind. But we'll go ahead and simulate. This is the final season. We built the team into being a true competitor. We'll probably be at like an 88, 89 overall by the time the season ends. So let's go ahead and go straight there. And not only did we make the playoffs, we had a first round bye, 14 and three. Very, very good stuff. Now, offensively, we had the 13th best offense in terms of yards. 
a little bit peculiar. And our defense was ninth in terms of yards. Interesting. I don't know how that gets to our current record, but it did. Davis Mills, who is a player tag of bridge quarterback, is playing his way out of that. 4,772 yards, 31 touchdowns to eight picks. And now he should be trending towards the franchise QB. I guess he is still only an 81 overall, but he's playing up to an 85, now up to an 86 with the plus four morale boost. I'm hoping that he ends up being a beast in this playoff run. That morale certainly going to help. Rushing, yeah, Bijan was great. Had a lot of attempts, but still rushed for over 1,600 yards and 22 touchdowns. Damian Pierce cleaned up a few as well. Bijan, five yards per carry, great season. Amari Cooper, big addition to this offense, goes for over 1,500 yards on 113 catches, six touchdowns. John Mechie goes for over 1,000 with nine touchdowns. Keith Chambers, the tight end, had a very good year. He had star dev, which shouldn't be a shock to anybody. Just kind of like what you usually expect. It's rare to get superstar or above. Nico Collins was all right. Bijan was pretty good as a runner. And I don't think Manny Terrell ended up playing that much. But we have two basically of the same player in those deep threat style receivers. Tremaine Edmonds, 120 tackles. Levante David, did they change my depth chart? They certainly did. That's so annoying. Uh, 26 tackles for loss for Will Anderson Jr. Amazing. 25 for Tyrell Neighbors. Oh my goodness. Ed Oliver, 24. Sacks, 16 and a half for Will Anderson. 12 and a half for Ed Oliver. 10 and a half for Jonathan Grenard. Neighbors had seven and a half. Unreal numbers. The fact that Levante David is actually getting playing time on this team is beyond frustrating. Yeah, they changed everything around, man. Are they just, they had to have changed sub linebacker. Why is that the case, man? Meekins is just gonna be so much better. Mechie in the slot, I guess. And then Malik Black, we don't know his dev trait yet, but he is a 79 overall already, or 78 playing up to a 79. I really don't mind the draft pick. I think, I think he's gonna end up being pretty good for us and hopefully impactful down this playoff stretch. So we have made it to the divisional. Obviously we are an 88 overall, but 87 offense to 91 defense. Like we are a very good 88 overall. And with Keith Chambers getting a bit of a boost here to an 80, maybe we even go up. Obviously it's going to take more than your tight end going up plus one overall to really increase your team. But I suppose it's possible. Manny Terrell goes up to a 76. I think, is he the rookie? He is the rookie. So could be quite good. It's not really playing a ton. And at this point, I don't really care to change it. I'm not going to jump in for the divisional. This is just a game we have to win. We lost 28 to 25. Oh my God. Will Anderson Jr. will go up to a 98 overall. He had a very good video. And uh, we're going to end this here at an 89 overall. So unfortunately, could not bring the Texans to the Super Bowl. Madden Sim was just not on my side. I'm going to do one more week so we can see the uh, dev traits. I don't know what it is. Somehow my Xbox is linked to my PC. So I get a notification every time I get an achievement. I just got an achievement for relocating a team, which I haven't done, by the way. Uh, Terrell did have star dev. Not really a big surprise there. But this is the final team. I mean, Bijan Robinson played a big time role. Just look at the overalls with the morale boost. Like I'll just call Davis Mills an 88 or whatever. Black ended up having superstar X Factor. I'm going to do another quick season. You get more bang for your buck and hopefully a Super Bowl. Season recap has the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. And we don't really have anything to show other than winning coach of the year, which is big. But we got to speed run through this one. I don't want this video to be three hours long. All right, got to do whatever we can to bring back our draft class. Because I like a lot of these players, including Damian Pierce, who's a backup running back. He's been very good for us. Derek Stingley still going to test free agency, even though I offered him the big contract. I, I gave him the low risk which the player will like this offer. They may accept less, but I thought that was pretty good. Kenyon Green thinks so. I'm willing to overpay to bring some of the players on this team back, and that's kind of what I'm doing. Jalen Petrie going to test free agency. I'd still like to bring him back. Uh, I'm going to let Andre James walk. We can always re-sign him. Christian Harris is not going to want to come back. Ryan Bates, we don't need to bring back. And I'd like to bring Derek Stingley back, but I'm not going to franchise tag him. So I'll do whatever it takes to bring him back in free agency. I'm rolling the dice a bit here. Actually, no, I'm not. We have 80 mil in available salary cap. I'm just going to franchise tag him. Also, it looks like he regressed to just star dev. So that's a little bit frustrating. Zeke is here. Dalvin Cook, don't care about the running backs. Evan Neal is here. He's interested. And we could kick Elton Jenkins over to guard. That'd be a big upgrade for the team. Kayvon Thibodeau is here. Man, did the Giants not bring back any of these guys? How are they spending their money? So what do I need? 
I have a right guard. That's right. I signed David Edwards. I need a center. Ed Oliver, superstar X Factor, by the way. I really need a center, and I would like to bring back Jalen Petrie, and that's it. Jonathan Grenard, also star dev. I'll take it. Like, there are better corners we could get, but I just kind of want to bring back Jalen Petrie. So, I mean, I'll give him... I'll give him a huge contract just to make sure he re-signs. Also, Dax Hill has a superstar X Factor. Kind of cool to see. Probably going to avoid Evan Neal and just get a center. Tyler Linderbaum is not bad. And it's he's the best one I can get. There are 10 teams interested. We could just bring back Andre James. But Linderbaum is a huge upgrade. So the biggest guy I want here is uh, Tyler Linderbaum. And hopefully he's assigned on. Yes, Tyler Linderbaum is now a Texan. We also brought Jalen Petrie back. I'm hoping to bring back or bring in AJ Cole. Maybe I have to offer a little bit more. Am I going to overpay for a punter? It's the final year. Sure. And AJ Cole has signed on. Still have so much cap space. I think we've just managed it really, really well. NFL draft time, 89 overall team. I don't even know what position we could possibly need. Okay, th this corner is legit. This corner is really good. Marcus Gross is gross. Disgusting. A catching, A man, A press, B to D zone is still good. He's not super fast, but this is going to be a good player. David Bone, dude, we got the all name team in this draft. The Bone Man. I could I could come up with a lot with that. Emphasis on come up with. Elijah Beatty also looks good. I could do a lot with this one too. He might actually go well with Bone. Is this draft class just stacked? It seems actually really good. David Bone goes number one. Marquise Meyer. The corners are still on the board. All right, two ones and a future two. Uh, one of the first round picks was next year. Gets me the number four overall pick. Do I take Marcus Gross? He definitely seems really good. Or do I bet on the other corner? The reason I'm kind of leaning toward him, A to C man coverage, but he's man to man archetype. And with B press and B zone, I think he's going to be really good. Better athlete, I think. I'm going to take him. We'll have to see. Hidden Dev, 93 speed. We'll have to see how good he actually is. Maybe can start right away. I'm really interested to see if we made the right choice on corners. But that'll be the draft for me. All right, let's see here. We got an 80 overall cornerback. Did Elijah beat him out in terms of overall? We'll see. 81 man, 76 zone by default. Very, very good corner. I think there's a decent chance. I mean, maybe even a great chance. So you got decent depth down the board. Uh, that he is superstar X Factor. <laughs> and we didn't get the highest rated. Marcus Gross is an 82 overall. 83 man, 76 on, also 93 speed. And he's got superstar X Factor. Pretty decent draft class. The Probably the two best corners I've seen in any of my Madden franchises so far. I would say easily. I don't think, I don't think I've gotten more than one at an 80. I was even star dev down there. So the question is, where does BD even play? He's not going to play over Dory Jackson or Derek Stingley, of course. I'll play him at CB3. Do I play him over a Dory? Ah, screw it. Final year. I'm going to play him over a Dory Jackson. I'm going to bet on the fact that he has at least superstar dev. I think it's going to be superstar X Factor, but... I suppose there is a decent chance it's just star because there is already another superstar X Factor player in the class. I really thought we were drafting like the most athletic corner. Now, here's the thing. If I was actually playing the games, would I prefer this guy? I think so. He's 6'3". That's the difference. A 6'3", 21-year-old corner, which is super important as well, by the way, that still moves very well, very athletic. Like you're not sacrificing uh, agility and change of direction just because he's so tall. And with this other player, first of all, oh my goodness, I thought this is not just corners. This is the entire Bears team, right? Oh, no, okay, never mind. It was just corners. I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see everybody. All right, they got a lot of good corners. I don't know why they took him, uh, but he is five ten, also twenty one, maybe a bit more agile, eighty nine to ninety one. But who would you, who would you prefer, a five ten corner or a six three corner? That's the same age and and same athleticism. I would probably prefer the uh, the taller guy. And also, nice disconnect. Only four and three at the midseason mark, despite being a 90 overall team. A little disappointing, but I hope we make a big time run uh, down the second half. We've seen that happen a bunch of times, so why not? Why not now? And we can still win the division. We have the best record in the division, tied with the Jags, so uh, still could very easily make the playoffs here. And we do sneak into the playoffs at nine and eight. 
We won the division. The Jags finished in fourth. And Davis Mills had a very good season. He's still got the bridge quarterback tag. That surely is going to go off at some point. I mean, 4,800 passing yards, 43 touchdowns to eight picks. That's very clear MVP type numbers. Receiving Nico Collins. It's not even possible. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I, I changed my depth chart that said Nico Collins doesn't even play. He was like sixth on the depth chart. Yet he has more catches than anybody, more yards and touchdowns than anybody. So with, except for Keith Chambers, who also had 11 touchdowns. Great numbers, but I, I said you don't play. It's so annoying to just have the CPU just do whatever they want. Because I didn't set that. It's just, it's just not how I set it up, man. It's so annoying. I wanted Terrell or, and Terry to play more because they have super st or star dev, and they didn't. And BD does only have star dev. All right. I made the wrong decision clearly because one has superstar x factor and one doesn't also as you can see the cpu put a dory jackson back in the starting job i'm like i'm seriously annoyed at this see if we can beat the Bengals here nope we lost uh yeah that's gonna be the video man we lost every single playoff game i don't know what i can tell you we had the best overall in the league and lost every matchup we went nine and eight there's not much I can do. When I build a 90 overall team and the team doesn't win in simulation, they start whoever they want to start. Uh, it is what it is. It's going to be Chiefs and Cowboys playbook supremacy. I think that's just the best and most consistent way to get wins. Run a 4-3 and run Chiefs defense, maybe even Chiefs offense as well. Oliver back down to superstar. Petrie up to superstar. I don't know how any of this works. Brian Branch down to star. I have it turned off. and They still do it anyway. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.